Wouldn't it be amazing if you could get rid of distractions like dust spots and power lines in your image with the simple click of a button? With the help of artificial intelligence, now you can, but you also need to know a couple simple tricks to ensure high quality. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to get great results while eliminating 80% of this tedious cloning. Let's start by reviewing an image I've already edited to see how we can do better. So I've got a foreground exposure, I blended in a better sky, and then I made some color and vignette adjustments here. So a lot of luminosity masking work, a lot of corrections to get to this point, and I think it looks pretty good. But if we open up the sky group, you can see that I did my dust removal on this separate layer above a camera raw smart object. And if we alter option click it, you can see here are all the dust spots I had to remove. I was out in the desert, there was a ton of dust, and I really had to fix a lot of problem areas in my sky. And you can tell from just all these little areas, this took a lot of time to fix all of that. And more importantly, if I want to make a change to the image, all of this work could become out of date. So for example, if I want to adjust the sky to make it a little more colorful, let's go double click it. If I go and make this exposure a little bit darker here, let's say we do that, say OK. It could be any sort of adjustment here. Now all that cloning work is suddenly out of date and I'd have to redo this entire layer. So not only did I spend a lot of time on it the first time, I might have to go and make further changes later if I didn't do it inside the raw. So this can really cost you a lot of time. That's not ideal. Let's undo that last change to exposure and let's do this a better way. Let's get rid of the manual approach we used here and we're going to do the whole thing in an automated way in just a second. But let's just quick confirm that we have the problem still in this layer here by going up to filter, camera raw filter, and then in ACR here, we can go to the healing tab and visualize spots or click B and Y to get to this point. And now we see all these little circles in the sky showing us, yep, there's a lot of dust spots that we need to remove. So the problem is definitely in this layer and we need to fix it. Let's cancel. And the tool we're going to use to adjust this is a program from Skylum. We go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar Neo. This is an amazing piece of software that can do many, many things. When you click on this, we're going to be taken into its plugin interface, and we're just going to focus on the dust spot and power line removal in this tutorial, but it does a whole lot more. What I want to do, instead of using a preset, is just go to the edit menu where you have full control of everything, and I'm looking for the erase tab. And up top here, you have the option to manually remove any arbitrary object. I could try and remove this rock if I wanted to. But what I really want is just this bottom section where you can automatically remove power lines or dust spots. And with just the one click of remove dust spots, it's going to take care of that. I don't even have to wait for the preview. I can click apply and Neo is going to go find every piece of dust in this image and go fix it for me all in one shot. And here you can see it's been applied as a smart filter because I'm working on a smart object. And we can confirm that it's fixed the problem by going up to filter, camera filter, I'm going to hit B and Y is my shortcut to get back there. And you can see all those dust spots are gone. And you might be wondering, well, what's that little white spot there? Well, let's cancel and let's zoom in there and see that, well, you know, it was a star and the tool is so intelligent that it left the star alone and just went after all those little dust spots. So I think that's pretty incredible that it did all that work for us in one click. Now, I don't generally like the idea of giving an AI complete control over my work. I want to use it where it's beneficial. And in this case, I really just want to put it in the sky because that's where I have dust spots. I don't want to put it over the tree and rock and other areas because it might make a mistake. It might do something I don't want it to do. So ideally, I'd give it a sky mask. But in this case, I already did that work with my blending. So that's, that's effectively done. But if I hadn't, we can do that right here on the smart filter mask. And the easy way of doing that, right? Anything that's white here on a filter mask is revealing the filter itself. So anything that's white on this is revealing the dust removal from Luminar because that's what we did. So what I want is white in the sky and black in the foreground. So it'll protect areas that are not sky from any possible unwanted change. And we just go up to select sky. And of course, this will select the sky, but because we're already working from a white mask, what I really want to do is select the foreground and make it black. So I'm going to go to select inverse, and then I can hit shift delete and just choose to fill with black. And very quickly there, we've knocked out that foreground. So there's no possibility that the dust removal is going to do anything on the rock, the foreground of the tree. It just helps protect our image. I think that's generally speaking a good workflow to use. Let's go ahead and undo that though. I'll show you another way you can approach that if you want to be even more precise because 
It can be hard to know exactly what's being affected or where, and you can use the Lumenzia Basics panel, starting with version 10.9.5 or later. The Isolate button has a new tool. If we right click, we can see on the shortcuts here is the uh, Command button. If we hold Command and click on this, it will help visualize the changes that were incorporated in a smart filter. This is a smart filter, and we can see exactly what it's changing by command clicking on that eyeball icon. And when we do so, the tool is also smart enough to know, hey, you had applied it everywhere. The reason for using the visualization is probably because you want to apply it selectively. So would you rather start with a completely black filter mask or a filter mask of the sky? You can automatically apply that. Let's just say um, we'll use a black filter mask. We, we already looked at how to do the sky. And so here it's hiding the entire change. And what we have here are these two areas up top. There's a visualization and there's a duplicate of our layer. It's been brought to the top so that none of these other layers are gonna cause any distraction. And we've got our black filter mask, so it's hidden. So what we're seeing right now is a comparison from the fully adjusted dust removed version of the image. And then beneath it here, the version where we've blacked out those adjustments. So anything which is brighter like this is being changed by this filter. So what we can do is we can click on the mask, hit B for our brush, and then just using a white brush, we can paint on any area where we want to accept the change. And so when these little brighter areas turn dark like the rest of the image, then we've effectively applied the change in those areas. And the areas that were already dark to begin with, there is no change. So we're only looking at the things where there's some kind of difference and where revealing it in a mask might make a difference. But we could just quickly and easily selectively bring in just the changes we want. And then when we're happy with that, we want to get this mask back onto our layer. And we just click on the isolate button in Lumenzi again. It automatically brings it down and discards those temporary visualizations. So we now have the perfect reduction of all that stuff in the sky nicely cleaned up. And because it's a smart filter, it's adaptable. So if we double click on our layer now, we can go try in the same adjustment. Let's go in and we use 0.8 last time. So let's do the same thing. Say OK. And now it's adjusting the raw. And then Neo is going to go and readjust all the dust work. It's automatically going to fix everything for us. So it matches perfectly all these little dust spots. They're going to go away and there won't be any mismatch like we had last time with the manual approach. And there you can see, voila, it's done. And if we go up to filter, camera raw filter, hitting B and Y, we can see, yep, all those dust spots, they're still gone, even though we changed the raw processing. So really powerful stuff there. I'm going to cancel that. Let's now take a look at another example where I've got a bunch of power lines that I want to remove from the sky. And it's not just from the sky. It does go over the building and attaches to some of these structures here. So we need to watch out for that. But if I can get any benefit in removing these lines, instead of going through with these like 10 or 11 different power lines and manually removing each one of them, that's going to save me a huge amount of time. And thankfully, Neo can also help us with this. Now, I happen to have a smart object to begin with, but if you don't, you can select all your layers right click and then just choose convert to smart object. That way you'll have a smart object as your single target. And then you just go up to filter, go back to Skylum software, Luminar Neo. And we're once again, going to go do the same thing. We're going to go click on edit. We're going to go to erase. We're going to ignore the manual stuff. And in this case, I want to remove both power lines and dust spots. So I can click them both and go ahead and click on apply. Neo is going to go and find all the problems, go and fix them for us automatically. And you can see it's done a beautiful job. I mean, this image looks pretty much ready to go to social media, I'd say, with, with one little issue. There's a part of this building that got knocked out with the sky there. So I'd like to fix that. And on closer inspection, I think the building is not great. I don't love what it did here. If we turn off the adjustment for a second, you see there's where the different power lines were. And it found them but I don't know if it did the best job of fixing them over the building. If we just go back and show that, we can see things look a little bit wonky. So I kind of want to mask this out of the building and just use these sky areas. And then if we zoom back and just look at where it hits the buildings over here or this bridge, this looks a little bit funny. And again, sure enough, that's where power line came through and it's just a little bit off, but most, most of these areas look really clean. So I think it did an amazing job. So, it's already saved us a lot of time. We just don't want to leave it as is. We need to mask it into the sky and then we'll go and manually fix the other areas that it didn't do a great job on. 
So to do that, I'm gonna go back to the basics panel. I'm gonna command click on the isolate button once again. And this time, because I've got a white filter mask, meaning that the adjustment's being applied everywhere, I've got the power line removal everywhere, the basic panel's warning said, hey, is that what you really wanna do? This tool is really meant to help you selectively reveal a smart filter, so you probably wanna start with a black filter mask or at least a filter mask of the sky. You can leave it as is, but the visualization is not gonna show you anything. I'm gonna choose the sky filter mask, in which case it's automatically going to filter to the sky. And you can see, once again, we've got our visualization up top here with this group. And then we've got a temporary edit layer. It's a copy of this layer with a working filter mask we can play with. And everything that's bright is an unapplied change. So these areas in the sky here, because they've been masked in on the filter mask, they're dark. All of those power lines have been removed, but we have lines across the building because the sky was not part of that area and that has not been fixed. So we need to go and take care of that by either revealing it. We can go on our mask here, hit B for my brush, and I can brush over these areas. And anything that gets darker now has the adjustment, but we already know that's a problem. So I'm gonna undo that. But if you wanted to confirm that, you can just zoom into an area like this and you can just turn off the top visualization, stop highlighting things. We can see here's the current state of the image. And if we were to brush this in, we would get this. If I shift click on the mask, it temporarily shows the entire adjustment. And obviously that doesn't look very nice. So I'm gonna undo that. And in fact, I wanna get rid of this part of the adjustment here. I think it actually made the building worse in this area here. And this kind of came through because it looked like sky. So I'm gonna hit B for my brush, make sure I'm on the filter and just using black paint here, go and just brush out that little area where it kind of snuck through. We don't want that. Also, it looks like the uh, antennas on the top of the building got worse. Let's go and restore them and we'll just manually fix this power line in these here. But this is a lot less work to work on these power lines than to work across the entire sky. I mean, that's gonna be a lot more work if we had to do that. Let's also zoom in here and we can see there's a little bit of an edge here. And again, if we go and take a look without the adjustment here, you can see the power lines were coming through. And so that's why we got this weird looking artifact. I don't necessarily need to remove it. I'm just gonna clone this out. So I'm gonna fix that as well. So at this point, I think I've had a great looking smart filter mask, which is going to bring in Luminar Neo in all the places where I find it beneficial in the open sky, but without doing anything that's going to affect the building or random areas like the bridge or the water because it showed no real benefit there. If we go and turn on the visualization again, you can see there's no dust spots down here. There's no power lines. There's nothing that I need to go and remove, but the tool is making some changes in the shadow areas. And I don't know that that's going to be helpful to me. It's, it's if anything, probably going to be negative, although Sometimes I've seen it make improvement, but I'm gonna use this as is. We're gonna use Neo in this sky area. And the way we bring this back to our official layer is we just click on the isolate button in the basics panel again, and it brings that down and gets rid of the visualization. And now we've got our fix of the power lines in the open sky, and we need to fix those little remaining areas. So we've got this thing to fix and the building. And to do that, I'm gonna go click for a new blank layer and we'll just call this clone. So this is gonna be manual cloning, no different from anything you've done in the past. We're just using Neo to get like 80% of the job done and now we're gonna go finish it here. So I'm gonna go reach for the clone stamp tool, just sample a little bit above and just kind of brush in this area to go and clean that up. And I could spend as much or as little time as I want there, but I think that's fine for my purposes. And then let's go over to the building and here things are definitely a little bit more tricky with these power lines. And there's a very cool trick we can employ to fix them because these are straight lines and we can use the spot healing brush to help take care of it. Now I should note with all these tools here, if you're using uh, the stamp tool, make sure it's set to current and below because if a blank layer, there's nothing there. So it needs to pull from what's below it. Uh, and then same thing with like the spot healing brush, the healing brush, I wanna sample all the layers here. So what I wanna do is fix this line and we can do that very quickly and easily by clicking at one end, move to the other and hold on shift and click the other end. It creates a straight line between those points to automatically fix it. it. looks like I missed a little spot there. So I can clean those areas up if I need to, but you can very quickly improve that whole thing. And we keep doing the same thing on the building here. So we can just go click, move to the other side, shift click, and it's removed it. 
Now it's not perfect. It's a spot healing brush. It's, you know, it also has its little imperfections. If you want to spend more time on this, you certainly can go through with a clone stamp tool or the regular uh, healing brush to go clean it up even further. But I'm not going to spend time showing things you probably already know about. I just think it's helpful to know about this click and shift click to automatically get rid of the remainder of that power line. And here it's done less of a good job. So I'm going to maybe spend just a moment to try and clean that up a little bit. You know, these windows, I'd probably come back and spend more time there. But, you know, again, it depends if you're going to print this or how, how big you're going to be with this enlargement. You know, little, little defects, but it's not a lot of work to fix that. And just go shift click there to remove that. With just those quick couple of moves, you see we've cleaned this up substantially and we can spend a little more time if we want to. I also want to note, I'm working with a Wacom pen. And if you're doing that, you got to be careful of one thing. And that is, I'm going to make this brush bigger just to show if I touch and push now, I get a full adjustment. But if I had turned on the pressure sensitivity, I might get a full adjustment. Sorry, I need to click and turn that on. I might get a little adjustment or I might get a bigger one. It's kind of uncontrolled. So you want to turn this off. And also under the settings here, the size should be off because if this is on pen pressure, then this is also going to respond. And instead of getting a nice clean removal, you'll probably get this teeny little pencil thing that is not nearly as big as what looks like the size of your brush. So that's how you fix that. But you can see with just a couple of quick fixes here, we've added this removal via Neo to automatically fix all those power lines. And then manually we went in and cloned out the rest here. And we took advantage of the isolate button in the basics panel to help confirm exactly where we wanted to make some changes to the image versus where we wanted to do this manual work. And now click this next video to learn more ways you can use Luminar with masking to improve your images.